okay now let's take one question from your uh, chapter speed distance in time now what is the question saying a boy went to his school at a speed of 12 km per hour matlab ek bachcha hai jo apne ghar se say home to school he is going to school at the rate of 12 km per hour but while returning he is returning at the speed of 8 km per hour and the total time that means for going from home to school and from coming back to home from school the total time he is taking is given to you as 50 minutes now what exactly is being asked in the question that what is the distance total distance now you see here you have to understand one thing he is asking you what was the total distance he walked that means total distance means first of all he will go from home to school that distance you have to consider and then when he will return back that distance also you have to consider so first of all i will try to calculate the value of 1d and then i will multiply it with 2 so that i can get the total distance he walked so how i will start this question we know that total time is nothing in this case that is from the time he is going to take from home to school and then the time which he is going to take from school to home total time is given to you as 50 minutes so taking the units under consideration we have to first check you have to first change the value of minutes into hours and that you can do by simply dividing it with 60 now formula for time is total distance upon speed we all know this formula speed is equals to distance upon time now if i am saying i want to calculate time then the formula is distance upon speed now what is the distance he has to travel in both the cases that distance i have already denoted as d but while going from home to school he is maintaining a speed of 12 so the total time becomes d upon 12 and while returning he is maintaining a speed of 8 km per hour so it will become d upon 8 so if i calculate this value further first of all i will just cancel 0 and 0 then i will take the lcm it will become 24 so it will become 2d plus 3d is equals to 5 upon 6 so the net value you will get in the next step for the distance is nothing but 5 and 5 will get cancel and d is coming to you as 4 km but ye jo d aaya hai aapka ye ek side ka distance bata raha hai that means when he walks from home to school he is covering 4 km but in the question question is asking you to find the total distance he is walk matlab hamara jo answer hoga that will be equals to d plus d that means 4 km plus 4 km that is equals to 8 km so the correct answer is 8 km so next we will take some question from the section hcf and lcm now this time you have got some four to five question from this particular section so we will take one by one those questions so what is our next question in the question it is given that x plus 2 is a common factor of two quadratic polynomials now when i say that x plus 2 is a common factor of two quadratic polynomials that means that x plus 2 is nothing but your hcf that is the highest common factor for two quadratic polynomials and those two quadratic polynomials are given to you as x square plus ax plus b and the other one is x square plus bx plus a now after using this what you have to calculate in the question is the ratio of a and b you have to calculate a ratio b and the options which are available here are 1 2 3 and 4 so what is the approach to solve this type of question now when i say that something is a factor of two polynomials then the first step ask me to equate the value of that common factor equals to 0 from there whatever value of x i am going to get that value will satisfy both the polynomials so what we have done we have taken the value of x plus 2 we have equated it to 0 since it is given as a common factor we have got the value of x as minus 2 now i will put this minus 2 in both this quadratic polynomial so when i will put this x equals to minus 2 in the first polynomial it will give me 4 minus 2a plus b equals to 0 and when the same value i will put in the second polynomial i will get the value as 4 minus 2b plus a is equals to 0 because x plus 2 is a common factor for both of them now what exactly we have to find is the ratio of a and b so what i can do in the next step i can equate both the values because of both of them are equals to 0 
so when i will equate both of them what will be the net value see 4 and 4 will get cancelled now you can send this b term to this side and a term to this side so it will become in the next step 3b equals to 3 so in the next step you can cancel this 3 and 3 and the final answer you will get for a by b is nothing but equals to 1 which is there in our first option now let's take some questions from trigonometry section so out of them uh, let's take the next question in the next question the value of sine theta is given to you and the value is m square minus n square upon m square plus n square and he has already given that the value of theta is in the first quadrant that is from 0 to pi by 2 and using this you have to find the value of cos theta now what you have to do here you have to simply draw the triangle first and consider this angle as theta now as we all know that sine theta is nothing but perpendicular upon hypotenuse that means this particular side is going to give you the value of perpendicular and this particular side is going to give you the value of hypotenuse so in place of perpendicular i am going to write m square minus n square and in place of hypotenuse i am going to write m square plus n square and if in the question he is asking you to calculate the value of cos theta then the value of cos theta is nothing but base upon hypotenuse in my figure i have already got perpendicular i have already got hypotenuse so using pythagoras theorem i can calculate the value of my base and the formula for that is h square minus p square now you have already got the value of h that is m square plus n square so just make the square of that m square plus n square whole square minus p square that means m square minus n square whole square now if you solve it in the next step you will get the value of base now how you are going to solve it just open the bracket a plus b ke whole square se agar hum isko khulte hain to it will become m to the power of 4 plus n to the power of 4 plus 2m square n square similarly for the second bracket if you open you will get minus m to the power of 4 minus n to the power of 4 and then you will get plus 2m square n square now if you see here carefully then you will find that two values that is n to the power of 4 and n to the power of 4 will get cancelled and you are left with the value as 2m square n square plus 2m square n square that means 4m square n square now if you take the under root value out then the value of base will give you 2mn and so our answer becomes cos theta is equals to 2mn upon m square plus n square that is present in one of the option so coming to our next question now what is the next question he has given you uh, one triangle abc in which suppose i draw just a triangle abc in which angle a is given to you as 30 degree and the circum radius now see before going to this question i should know the meaning of this word circum radius that is denoted as capital R and that is given to you as 10 centimeter because if I know the meaning of this circum radius then only I can proceed in this question because in the next step he is asking you to find the length of this side BC. Now what is circum radius? Now to understand the meaning of circum radius you have to first know the term circum circle and before knowing the term circum circle you should be able to know the meaning of circum center. So I will tell you the meaning of all the three at one row. First of all, circumcenter is nothing but the point of intersection of perpendicular bisectors in a triangle. That means circumcenter is that point where all the perpendicular bisectors meet. Now, suppose in this question you find a circumcenter here, then this particular point is equidistant from all the three vertex points of the circle. Now, this particular point whom I am saying circumcenter and I am denoting it is with P, that particular point is equidistant from all the three vertices of the triangle. Now taking those distances as radius, if I draw a circle, then it will circumscribe the triangle. And this particular circle is nothing but your circumcircle. Now after knowing the meaning of circumcenter and circumcircle, circumradius is nothing but this particular distance, which I am saying is constant in this case. And that is given as capital R. So you have got a relation, you have got a formula to calculate capital R and the formula is R is equals to A upon 2 sin A. 
Now, in the question, you can understand the side opposite to angle A is always denoted as small a. And that side is nothing but BC, which is which you have to calculate in the question. Capital R value is already given to you and the angle A is already given to you. So, now you are in a position to get the value of this side BC. So, I will just put the values here. R is equals to 10. BC, you have to calculate 2 into sin A, angle A is 30 degrees and as we all know the value of sin 30 is 1 by 2. So in the next step what you are going to get is BC equals to 10 centimeter because sin 30 if you will replace it with 1 by 2 this 2 will get cancelled. Now let us take one question from geometry section. Now what is the question? You have got a triangle in a triangle PQR. So let us draw one triangle PQR. In this triangle PQR x is a point on pr now let's take any point on pr as x say let us suppose it is here and y is a point on qr so let's take it here and after that she has given that the entire length of this pr is 10 centimeter and similarly the length of the other things rx in the same figure is given to you as 4 centimeter then y r value this much is given to you as 2 centimeter and the entire length QR is given to you as 5 cm. Now he is asking you to check which one of the following options are correct. And the options are given to you in this format. First option XY parallel to PQ. Second option PQ is equals to 2XY. Third option PX is equals to QY. And fourth option PQ equals to 3XY. Now to know which one is correct, you have to understand the concept of BPT and this question is actually based on BPT concept which says basic proportionality theorem. So what is the theorem tells us? The theorem me ye kata hai ki suppose in a triangle you are getting the ratio so see in this particular figure suppose I join this xy. So what will happen? You are getting rx over px is equals to yr over qy so for that what you have to do say this entire length is 10 centimeter and from that you have already got the value of xr as 4 then obviously this length is 6 centimeter similarly if this entire length of qr is 5 centimeter and you have already got the yr value as 2 centimeter then obviously this qy is 3 centimeter so after writing this value if i write rx upon xp then this value is nothing but equals to ry upon yq because you can see 4 upon 6 is equals to 2 upon 3. Now our basic proportionality theorem says us that if these two ratios are given to you as equal or you found it out to be equal then obviously this line joining the two sides that is xy will be parallel to the third side that is pq. So out of the four given option, the correct answer is the first that is xy parallel to pq. Okay, so next question is again from geometry and what is the question says us that there is a rhombus. Now as we all know that rhombus is a four sided figure having all the four sides equal. And in this rhombus we have got some property and using that property only we are going to solve this question. Now let us name this rhombus as ABCD. In the question it is given that the diagonals of this rhombus say AC and BD the diagonals are of lengths respectively 20 cm and 48 cm. You figure me that AC is your shorter diagonal uski length is 20 cm and the longer diagonal is your BD which is 48 cm. Now after knowing the lengths of two diagonals you have to find the length of each side. And as we all know that rhombus ke jo chara side hote wo equal hote So you have to get the side of the rhombus you can say. So how you are going to do this? So for doing this what you have to do? You have to know just one property that the diagonals of a rhombus always bisect each other at 90 degree. Now what is the meaning of that? That where the point of intersection of diagonals is coming. Now that point is going to divide the each diagonal into two equal half. That means if I say that AC is of length 20 centimeter then when they will intersect at the point O then these two parts will become 10 each 
and similarly if this bd is of length 48 cm then the length of this two equal halves bo and od will nothing but 24 cm each now that clears the first line that diagonals bisect each other and the second is that they bisect each other at 90 degree that means wherever they will bisect they will form a 90 degree that means all these four angles are 90 degree so just take one of the triangle you can say in triangle AOB now all of you can see that in triangle AOB you are finding angle AOB as equals to 90 degree so if it is 90 degree then you can go for the calculation of this side say AB because we are interested for the side only by using Pythagoras theorem and you can write x square is equals to OB square plus OA square so what you are going to get OB square that means OB means 24 24 square plus 10 square now all of us know that square of 24 is 576 and square of 10 is 100 so the answer is coming x square is equals to 676 which gives the value of the side as 26 centimeter because square of 26 is nothing but 676 now these are some of the questions which we have discussed from this paper that is CDS2 math paper and in our consecutive videos we will uh, solve some more questions of this particular paper. Thank you.